Hi there, and a warm welcome to another episode of today's Parent, where we connect you with experts and provide you with information to make your parenting journey a bit more easier. I'm your host, Christine Cassina. Every time we end the show, we let you know that we are at Little Cribs, and today we want you to meet one of the co-directors of Little Cribs to let you know why they are so excited about kids' furniture and when it comes to particular furniture like baby coats on how you can select the best baby coat and what to look out for. Let's welcome Trisa to the show. Trisa, very nice to have you today. Thank you, Christy. Very nice to Always have you. Always a pleasure. Very nice to have you. Mm -hmm. So let us know again, why are you guys so passionate about kids' furniture? Um, I'll be very honest. It's because we are mothers from the word go. And it came out of a necessity to look for friendly furniture and um, fun furniture that's functional and safe. Right. right. So we actually, my partner and I, um, at, from the beginning, um, shopped for furniture, especially cribs, and it was such a challenge getting one that is safe. Uh, what you could get in the market was uh, some that are done like uh, with wood that is not well treated, right. and it could splinter. And you know what would happen if a splinter got into a kid's, um, you know? Yeah. So we actually thought about it and were like, because of what we have with our background. My partner is a designer, uh, she's done art and design. Myself, I've done uh, textile design, and um, we thought we can match together, maybe do something. That makes a good that, combination. Exactly, and that's how Little Crib started. Right. Yes. And you've done this for how long? Wow, it's been seven and a half years. That's a long time. That's quite some time. That's quite some time. And it's been a good run? It's been awesome, awesome. Very good. We thank God for the growth. It's been, we've seen the milestones, we've, we've grown. I mean, from a very small <laughs> shop to now, very big. We, we started with a few courts. We're now doing major courts. We can even do about 50 in a month. That's yeah. good. And uh, with other uh, kinds of furniture. Right. Yes. What inspired the name Little Cribs? Um, little Cribs is actually little, of course, for little. Yes. And Cribs is for small spaces. Yeah, crib is another name for a, sp a space or yeah. a house. Yeah. yeah. So we are like, because we're doing uh, furniture for kids, why not just call it uh, little cribs? So that's how little space or a little wow. house. Yeah. All right. Exactly. Okay. And our, our logo is a mushroom, but that came from um, I don't know they watched um, the Smurfs. Yes. Yes, they live in mushrooms. Yeah. Yes. So the inspiration came from the Smurfs. Wow. Yes. It's a beautiful logo. I've seen it. Thank I you. I have seen it. Thank you. Do you get uh, parents asking you, people asking you, that since it's little cribs, that mm -hmm. you only focus on cribs, do you find sometimes that the name is limiting or you find a way to, how are you able to, to, to get it through to parents that you do more than cribs? You're actually very right. It's like you've read so many people's minds. We get a lot of that. Mm. The people will call and they're like, um, little cribs, um, do you only sell cribs or do you also sell <laughs> furniture for bigger children? And that's where we have to we've actually train our um, showroom staff yeah. to be able to explain why we call it little cribs. So it's just for the space, as in small spaces, yeah. but not limited to cribs. Okay. Yeah, so we get a, that a lot, but we've tried to train um, our staff members to try and expound it more when customers ask that. Okay. So it's true, it's not... Um, it's something you get a lot. You do. A lot of people lot ask of you. It, yes. Beyond the cribs, what else do you do? Um, wow. Even bigger beds, we have toddler beds, we've got uh, be bigger beds for until uh, children until 16 years old. Right. We've got nightstands, we've got storage units, we've got uh, chest of drawers, study tables, bank beds. I think everything to do with kids, any furniture to do with kids. Okay. Plus, of course, the decor and wallpaper. Um, oh, you bedding. do wallpaper as well? Yes, we do all that. Particularly for uh, kids' rooms? Just or? for kids' rooms. Only for kids' rooms. Kids' rooms. Inspired, of course, uh, for kids. And also kids who are able to express themselves. Yeah. Um, they're able to, we allow that. They can come and tell us, oh, this is what I want. And we right. work with their inspiration. So they're able to own their space. Okay. Yes. Do you get families that ask you, moms or dads, who ask you that come into my space yes. and I want you to do the whole room? Yes. You get that a we lot? We do that. We do that as well. We actually can offer full room consultation. It's called full room consultation. Yes. What does that entail? Yes. That entails getting into a space. Um, assumption most of the times being it's an empty space. We'll get people who have built their new homes or their um, dream homes. Yeah. And they want to really have a wow factor in it. Yeah. Most of those are the ones who will come to. Us. Okay. So they'll give us an empty space and tell us we just want you to create something that's 
what's dreaming about for our children. So in that case, we'll work from the walls, advise on what kind of wall treatment to do, yeah. if it's a paint colors, if it's wallpaper, if it's um, art, yeah, and also the furniture, things like rugs, lighting. So as part of a full room consultancy, we also do wall treatments. Right. Like uh, paint work, uh, wallpaper, uh, wall deco, you know, framed art. Okay. Um, Yes. All right. Yeah. So the one thing that's important for us to cover today, I know we have been in your shop before, we would want to focus on baby coats, baby cribs. Mm -hmm. Why is it important to have a crib? Um, Christine, baby coats are very functional uh, piece of uh, furniture. Most people will try and avoid that, but it is. And it's always good to ensure that your child sleeps on their space from day one right. if you are able to. Right. Of course, at times, circumstances uh, don't allow. Yes. But if they do, it's always good to encourage that. From day one, you sleep, from day they, one. They sleep in their own yeah, bed. Yes, so that they are also able to get used to their space. Yeah. And then um, I'll give an, a good example why. You know, kids are very territorial. Mm -hmm. we, tr we try and avoid that, but it's true. Because that's why you find at times that a child will not sleep with their favorite blankie or their toy because they're so used to it, yeah? So you can imagine um, from day one, you've not trained your child to sleep on the space. Then maybe after six months or one year, you are trying to. It takes a while, takes and that's why you find some people saying, oh, I'm in a transition stage, yes. and I'm trying to move baby from my bed to, to, to their, their space, own bed. and there's a struggle, a challenge. it's such a challenge. A yeah. challenge. So why would you want to postpone that kind of an issue? Why not do it from day one when Which they're able to get early. used to it? And then there's also an advantage, because once they get, they get used to it, depending with the space or the crib that you have bought, yeah. they can grow with it up to four years. Yeah, without changing of the mattress or the bedding and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's always a good thing to start from the word go. Mom or dad is watching right now and they're thinking about going shopping for, you know, for a baby coat. Yes. What are the things they need to look out for? Okay. I'll first start with, it's always good to like move around different vendors. Okay. Let's start with that, yeah. So you do your comparisons well and you know what you're comparing with and what this vendor has against, I mean, this crib has over the other one, yeah. So it's always good to compare yeah but also look at vendors who are certified who are known talk to parents look at reviews so that you are able to be confident that you're buying a crib that is safe so we'll start with the attributes um with a crib mm -hmm. of course you have to look at safety number one okay cribs uh, all most of them will come with the spindles you know the barriers on the side yeah there is the way that space should be it shouldn't be beyond a certain... Um, the measurements in between exactly. the, the, the spaces. Yes. Ideally, it should be about two, three quarter inches. Anything above that or anything smaller is not advisable. Okay. Especially when it's over, it means that their limbs can get in and, get, and stuck. get stuck. Yeah, And you don't want to have those kind of accidents. Right. Also, you'll have to look at the stability when you shake that crib. Is it stable? Is it shaking? Yeah, because again, at some point, the child will grow, and you know they'll have all this monkey business. Yes. They'll want to like do all this kind of things. So you need to be sure that it's a stable crib. Mm. Also, the space that you're taking the crib to is it enough for for the crib? For the kind of coat that you're looking exactly, to buy. Exactly. Exactly. It could be that you're shopping to have a crib that will be next to your bed. Yeah. And the time space is a challenge. You could be those lucky ones who have. So much a lot space. Of space. Yes. So also that is a factor to look at. Um, mattresses. People seem to forget about that a lot. Mattresses for cribs come in standard sizes of two feet by four feet. Right. And then there's also two and a half by four feet. You see, anything in between there would have to mean that you'll custom make the mattress as well. And then sometimes you find that you've bought the bed and then you didn't think yes. about the size you need for your for, for the for the coat, you need yes. to custom make the mattress as well. Exactly, exactly. And now you are running around, and you thought you were okay. You just thought that I'll just enter somewhere and get the mattress. So shock on you, and they're thinking, okay, I've been thrown aback. I have to start looking for a good mattress vendor yeah. who can custom it. Yeah. So it's always good to remember that. So buy a standard size as much as possible okay. to avoid that hassle okay. of looking for a mattress. You talked about at some point. When you're looking for a baby coat, you need to seek out professionals who make out who make baby coats. Yes. 
How can you tell? Because, you know, we, when, you, for example, you go to your local fundi mm -hmm. and then to have that conversation, show me your certificate of what makes you a good baby coat maker. Yes. Those are hard conversations to have. They are. Are, are there any pointers that you can share with parents mm -hmm. when you're looking for a baby coat? Do you've shared a few. Yes. How do you pick out a vendor? How okay. do you pick out a vendor? It's always good to, even with the vendor, let me not trash the vendors on the road <laughs> because, of course, pretty much... More often, and they most do. of us get get yes, get, and get they also are able to from do them. Yes. some good work. Yes, yeah? but I think it's always good to go and point out what you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the best thing I think would be to ask for their work. Look at um, and if you can actually not pictures, and not pictures because we've gotten <laughs> I don't know they've had those horror <laughs> stories where some will say I do this and then what you get. Vis -a -vis what totally you ordered different for from is the totally picture. different. So it's always good to look if they have. The crib, let them show you, and you look at it, experience it, touch it, yeah. you know, shake it, and that. If it, it, it's a picture, I think that's a no-no. The other thing, of course, is going to pages, and uh, of course, Google is a friend nowadays. Yes. Look for crib vendors. Look at their reviews. Yeah, because so do your own independent exactly. homework and the reviews that moms and dads are sharing online. The yeah, of course, when you find a vendor has bad reviews, or maybe they promise this, they give something else, yeah. or maybe their crib fell after fell apart after a few days. That's um, yes. you know, it's an alarm. Yes, it's it, that one you shouldn't talk to parents as well. Yeah, talk to friends. Of course, you all have friends here and there who gone through that stage. Yeah, ask them where did you buy your crib? What did you look for? If you are able to go to their houses and look at it and, you know, have a feel of it, the better. Right. But those are just a few. It's, it's always good to, yeah, do your homework right. Is that we are going to take a short break? And when we are back from the break, you'll tell us more about your baby coats and what parents need to look out for when they're shopping around. Okay. In studio today, we have Teresa Mogure of Little Cribs, one of the co-directors. We've been here for a long time and we always mention them on the show. Little cribs, little cribs. Today you get the opportunity to see the wonderful things that they do. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to today's episode of Today's Parent where we normally film at Little Cribs and we wanted to show you every time we talk about these little cribs, what do they have to offer? And in the studio we have one of the co-founders of Little Cribs, Teresa Mogure, who's going to take us through their baby coats. Teresa, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Christine. Take us through your beautiful baby coat. Thank you. So um, what we have here is uh, what you call a standard coat. If you came to Little Cribs, that's what you call it. Um, the dimensions are two and a half in terms of... Um, with the, okay. By four feet. So two and a half by four feet is a standard uh, baby coat. It's it's a standard. This is a standard design. For right. Us, yeah. Okay. But all our cribs are actually two and a half by four feet. Right. Yes. Okay. So why we do them that way is because um, our cribs convert later to a toddler bed, so they are used until four years. Mm -hmm. About three and a half to four years. Okay. So they have to be slightly wider than the normal crib of two by four, yeah, to allow for the child to use it until that age. Right. Yeah? So um, this is how they come, of course. <coughs> Sorry. Um, a, a normal crib will have uh, the sides, yeah? What okay. We talked for, I think we have talked about this earlier. And the spindles, the space in between. So the space in between the baby coat is called the spindles. Yes, the spindles are okay. these boards, and then now there's the space. Right, the space in between. Yes, the space in between. So ideally, this space should be two, three quarter wide. It shouldn't go beyond that. So when a parent is shopping for a baby coat, mm -hmm. they, it will be important for them to ask what's the size of the space in between. Yes, it would be. Or just go with a soda bottle. That's what most of people will say. Just try and put it in through the space. Right. If it goes through the space, that crib is not safe. Yeah, that's another way of testing it. Because, of, of course, there are some vendors who will be very over-enthusiastic yeah. to sell. And they might miss out to tell you that. Yeah. Or maybe lie. So it's okay. always good to maybe do it by yourself. The best way is to have a soda bottle in your bag. Just pass it through. If it goes through, that's not a safe um, crib. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then um, I think the other things people need to look at is the edge finish. Edge finish. Yes. It should be rounded, not very sharp corners. You can see like even our oh, corners are right. also rounded. This is just in case the child bumps into, onto the bed, yeah? So it will minimize the effect and the, of, of the lamp or whatever happens. Yeah. yeah. Of course, this would be safer than a sharp corner. Absolutely. Tree, yeah? Absolutely. 
Um, <clears throat> Then, um, is there a reason, is, by the way, before you go to your next point, is there a particular reason why you, most of your baby coats are white? Actually, not really. Most people will prefer white because they want to like supervise and ensure it's always clean. That's what they'll say. And then there's also the other thing of a baby coat being in a space where there's also lots of other elements that have color, right. like the wallpaper, okay. the, the okay. rugs, the bedding. So like this you can, the white neutralizes, here. of course. Yes, the white neutralizes, better. and it's a good canvas, and it's very neutral, so it will blend in okay. with everything else, and you don't have to struggle every time you want to change any element in the room. Right. Yes. This is called a bumper, a baby, what, this part, this part that, it, uh, of course, protects court the baby bumper. from... Court bumper. Yes. Why is it important? Um, but there, this is a necessary evil. I'm sure this is a discussion <laughs> we can have in another forum. Yeah. yeah. But court bumpers um, have been controversial, but they're also good. So I'll just explain why we as Little Cribs still sell them. Mm -hmm. Court bumpers actually help, especially when it's cold, to keep the crib warm. Right. Most people have. Um, say that it does actually keep the crib warm. But the most critical importance of the coat bumper is that it covers the, the edge, the spindle sides, yeah? In a way that when a child sleeps and maybe their limbs get trapped, um, yeah. you know the way So this they, protects this from protects that. This from protects that from that happening, the, From the yeah? baby getting stuck, the baby getting stuck. Because there's been incidents stuck. where maybe a child is asleep, they don't know their limbs have gone through and they've twisted and accidents have no, happened. they could be injured. We've experienced one client actually who hadn't used um, a, a bumper. A, 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 court, a court bumper. Yes, and when that happened, she actually came and got one. So that is just one. So you can imagine maybe other not reported cases. Right. So it's always good to be safe. But then again, there's also the issue of uh, where now the controversy comes in is because most people will think that the child can smother themselves. And that's when I ask um, parents to be very vigilant always. Anytime your child is in the crib, make sure you're watching on them. Make sure you have a monitor if you can afford one. A baby monitor. Yes, right. just to ensure that you know what is happening in that in the, crib. Right. When they are asleep or when they are awake. Because mm. at times they can, they can awake. They can yes. wake up. Yeah. And you may be probably busy in another room. Okay. Yeah? So okay. it's always good to make sure that you are, they are monitored. Whether there is a, a bumper or no bumper or soft toy or anything, okay. it's always good to ensure monitoring is happening well. well. All right. Yes. Is there a particular reason why it's this particular height, a baby coat? Yes, this is actually a standard um, height. Um, it's a conventional height. Okay. Yeah. Um, the reason, I'll, I think I need to explain because I think we don't talk about the mattress level. The reason it's like this is that most people, when you look at generally the height, they, they're able to... Oh, to pick the baby pick from. Pick the baby from, and yeah. comfortably. Yeah, comfortably. This is the conventional, actually, height, yeah? Okay. But also, I think I need to mention about the height of the mattresses. They come in two. Mm -hmm. This is the first one. And this is the one now when the baby is born at, from infancy, you use, yeah? Basically, because at that point, they're not moving, they're not standing, and the parent needs to be able to pick them. Well, with a lot of comfort and ease. Then we have another one that later, now when they start growing and they look like they want to get out of the crib, you can take it lower. So that way now it becomes like a cage, actually like a prison. So you are literally lowering it to just stop them from getting out of their crib. Because right. at that point they are very adventurous. That's okay. most of the times from eight months, yeah, depending, of course, with the development of the yes. of a child, yes. eight months and over. Okay. Yeah, so that's when you lower the mattress level. All right. Yes. Now that we are touching on the mattress, when a mom or dad is shopping for a baby mattress, a mm -hmm. baby coat mattress, what should they look out for? Well, mattresses by there are other things I think we need to continue talking about. Um, you remember during our old days, I think we used to use the ones with the Macintosh, the plastic covers. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Um, there's been an issue with that, actually, and it's good technology. We, we continue growing. Yeah. And, of course, we become more knowledgeable. With that, what happens, that uh, old Macintosh ones, it doesn't uh, regulate the heat because it's a plastic cover yeah so what happens if the baby is overheating there's no good distribution of the of, of heat right so it's ad advisable to avoid those ones and maybe use the ones that come with the fabric right and i think it's good that i show um, what we sell okay i think it's critical so this is uh, the mattresses we sell here at little cribs yeah when you look at it from from even the outside this material is a breathable one. 
Yeah. So a it's, fabric that is breathable. It's breathable. Breathable why? It's been it's an it's a knitted fabric. So in terms of uh, it can expand, it can uh, take in, it can absorb heat and distribute right. it well. Yeah? Okay. This is what you need, not the plastic uh, Macintosh. Yeah? Then of course it, was, it needs to be, ideally if you can, get one that has a removable cover, just in case of oopsie moments. Yeah. Yeah? There are times you can't really control, maybe yeah. something, an accident has happened and uh, maybe the diaper leaked. Yes. And, yeah? So it's always uh, good to have one that you can remove the cover and okay. clean. Okay. And then put it put it back yeah right so now with ours they have two there's the top cover we just talked about it the mm -hmm. breathable cover then you'll remove and there's another one this is just to protect the foam inside yeah so when you're washing this one you leave it with this okay why then, is this a second one important is it to protect the mattress just to protect the, okay. the foam okay. yeah ideally because you know uh, ideally you now if you're to wash this you don't want to leave it exposed like this yeah, this is just to protect the, the foam. Okay. So when you say uh, mattresses are breathable also, because you also talk about that, it means they have pores. Oh. They have small pores, you see, that go through right. all the way from one end to the other one, yeah? What are the pores for? These are to, you know, at times um, a baby might sleep with your, their, their face downwards, yeah? It's just to avoid an incident of uh, maybe them smothering themselves, yeah, because now this allows for air to go in. Interesting. Yeah, so it just minimizes the incident uh, or occurrence of, of seeds. Yeah. Yeah, which is... Sudden um, infant death syndrome. Yes, right. yes. Which is... Sudden um, death in the court, in the baby court. thing that most parents really oh, fear. People are scared of that. Exactly. A lot of moms and dads are scared of that. So it will minimize, but we're not saying it's a guarantee that it will not. Absolutely. Again, we we'll go back to supervision and monitoring. Absolutely. It's always good to make sure that your child is monitored. Okay. Then also the foam that is used on our mattress doesn't have any chemicals that are added to it. You'll find that most people who are doing mattresses will use shortcuts. So what they do, they try to harden because you know when you were growing up, we knew that when a mattress is hard, that's when it will yes. last longer. Yes. So that's what they'll do. They use chemicals to make the foam more compact. Harder. Yeah, and those chemicals actually have a side effect for some people when you breathe them in. So with ours, they're not. There's no chemicals added on that foam. Wonderful. Yeah. So Wonderful. even if you smelt, it doesn't smell um, like it has any chemical. No, right. And also because of safety, and we don't know whether your baby will come with allergies and that kind of stuff. Okay. So it's always good to be safe about that. No, right. Yeah. So, so what happens to the part of the, of the Macintosh for a parent who's thinking, this beautiful mattress of mine, of course the concern is to keep the baby mm -hmm. comfortable and safe, but like you said before, spills do happen, leakages do happen. True, true, true. Do you do, you do Macintoshes as well? Oh yes, we do. Very lovely ones. Not the really plastic, because you know what happens with the others, the plastic ones. Mm -hmm. Um, they are very cold, and then they make noise at night. <laughs> Every time you turn, there's some noise, some crinkling noise. So with ours, they are very luxurious on the top because they have a towel top. And then now the plastic cover is under. It's under. So it's when, uh, what we advise is that you buy this and also now buy the Macintosh cover, which is very luxurious and also warm. Yeah? And yeah. you can clean when you want to clean. And you can reuse it, not like the plastic, which yeah. at some point cuts yeah. after washing, too many washings. So they are more durable even than the plastic ones. All right. Yes. This is really beautiful. I'm mm -hmm. wondering, do you do for a bed like this, I only want to do my ordinary mosquito net. Mm -hmm. Do you have something fancier? Yeah, we do. We do. You do? Unfortunately, I don't have oh. one on set. But we have those that you can clamp on like this uh, oh, wow. mobile. Wow. Yeah, we have nets that you can clamp on this mobile and what will they'll do, they'll just be clamped here and then it just falls all the way. Okay. And then you also have others that have a free stand. Okay. Which is mobile, which is actually the best if one can um, invest in one get, of those. Invest in one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because even with that, we find that when you travel, like maybe to a rural home, yeah. um, you might need a net. Yeah. And most people will not be ready to host a child really as much as... They are ready to yeah. host adults. adults. So it's yes. always good to have a net that you can carry. And that one is normally very nice because it has a stand and you can always put, uh, put, pull it apart yeah. and then set it up. When you're done, of course, go back with it to, to your home. All right. Yeah. yeah. This is truly, truly beautiful. Yeah. As you're winding up, if there's any other tip you can share with our parents when mm -hmm. it comes to baby coats, when they're going shopping, yeah. when they're going shopping next time, 
what are the two or three top things you can share with them mm -hmm. to keep in mind? What has stuck with me so far today is the spaces in between. Yes. If a soda bottle can fit through, then don't buy it. Yes. What else can you think of to share with our parents as we, as we wind up this segment? I still emphasize you have to see it with your eyes. When you're shopping for a crib, make sure you see it with your eyes so that you are able to feel it. Yeah, look at it, look at the edges. Because again, shopping when you have a picture doesn't represent well. And there are so many unscrupulous vendors out there. <laughs> Download these photos have, and uh, send them download, all over. I think we have in Kenya this thing that what I ordered for versus what I got, yeah? We've had horror stories. <laughs> we have, and we've you seen them online. You don't want to be one of those in those statistics saying, no, 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 this is what I ordered for and this is what I got. Because someone used someone else's Design, image yes, yes yeah. to say to put it as theirs yeah so it's so always good see to see the look, bed see the bed again move around yeah i always encourage parents even when they come and meet me at the shop yeah i'll ask them have you moved around so that you're confident at the point you've decided that that's a crib you're buying you know you're buying it and uh, you're confident that it's something that is durable yeah also if you can get some form of um, guarantee we actually don't give guarantees, but we really work the journey with you. Yeah. We've had incidences where someone will say that um, maybe they are not able to adjust the mattress level properly and they need some help. And we'll actually send our fundies when yeah. they are going to do the installations. Right. And they'll go and assist to do that. We've had people who've said maybe I need my crib moved from another room to another room. Yeah. And the space, it can't go through the doors. And yeah, we'll send our fundies. Yeah? So it's also good to look, get a, a vendor who will work with you the journey not the ones who okay fine we've the sold transaction the is done we it's are over. done yeah so the next time you're coming to me it's to buy a new product yes or even if it's a complaint no 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 maybe i have to charge you and yeah yeah so they're, they're very money-minded just have someone who'll also work the journey with you i love that because yeah. i know in the other show we mentioned about beyond the baby the baby coats then if you're looking for something to then your toddler and beyond yes you also do that one more thing before you go mm -hmm. beddings We've talked about the mattress. Any uh -huh. particular pointers you can share when a parent is looking to buy beddings for their baby coat? Mm -hmm. What are the things to look out for? Of course, always. You'll always, it's a win when you use cotton. Yeah, because cotton, cotton fabric is the best. Yes, it's good because it's absorbent. Yeah, it okay. will also help distribute the heat. I always insist on distribution of it because, you know, with a baby, they will all, they'll not say they're feeling hot. Mm. Yeah, they're, the only thing they'll do is cry. And at times, you're not even sure whether, are they crying because they are hot? Yeah, or they're wet. Or because they're wet. Yes. So yes, just, they're just avoid, let's eliminate that one issue yeah. of yeah. temperature when you're in the crib. Yeah? Just have a proper mattress, have bedding that is breathable, and it's cotton, and it's, you know, okay. so it absorbs... Um, uh, distributes heat well and so ad absorbs it in case of sweating and all. Yeah? Okay. And thank you for hosting us as well. And thank you for having me as well. And with that, we come to the end of today's episode of Today's Parent, where we were talking to Teresa Mogure, one of the co-founders of Little Cribs, where we normally host our show, Today's Parent. Little Cribs is about exciting kids' furniture that are durable, affordable, functional and also fun please check them out on instagram and on facebook as well if you need us to connect you with them let us know just send us an sms we come to the end of today's show i have been your host christian casina if you're looking for parenting information head over to www.supermamas.co.ke we look forward to having you in the next show thank you for watching